Uh, on Sunday mornings from 9.30 to 10.30, I teach our Balavihar teachers uh, chapter two of Gita, because they miss the main discourse, so I teach them. And so there's 10 teachers, and I'm sitting here, and I'm talking to them. And they're all sitting, and they're very intent and listening carefully to what I have to say. And all of a sudden, the phone starts ringing. And everyone's eyes don't shift an inch. They're all still staring at me. And it keeps ringing, and, I, and the, where it's coming from is this bag that's there, and I'm like, someone's phone is ringing. And, and both, of them, both of the aunties that are in front of me, and they're like, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and at this point, I was like, Oh man, I'm losing my mind because I feel like I'm the only one that's hearing this. Nobody else is hearing this. And immediately I had flashbacks of like beautiful mind and all those movies and the PC and things. And I was like, wow, this is happening to me at such a young age. And it turned out that one of the aunties was given a phone. She never had a cell phone. Was given a phone, and she didn't even realize she had it. And then afterwards, I was like, oh, thank God that it wasn't just me that's hearing that. Anyways, <laughs> we have to make common sense more accessible. We have to understand common sense, we have to live by common sense, being rational, being objective, because it makes sense. And making sense leads us to right thinking, right thinking leads us to being more peaceful. This idea of stress management, you know, when you first hear it, it sounds like a, a business discourse or a business seminar, but it's highly spiritual. Stress management has the same principles as karma yoga. In karma yoga, the two main principles that we have to understand is that we are not in control of our actions, of, our, of the results, we are in control of the actions. Put differently, the supply is fixed, the demand is dependent. I don't control you understanding what I'm saying. I do control what I'm speaking about. I don't control my resources. I control my demand. I don't control my supply. I control my demand. So karma yoga, stress management, the same. Bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga teaches about prasada buddhi. Or that uh, attitude of acceptance. Accept what? The resources. Accept when we get prasad, we don't say how much or what kind, we just accept it. In the same way, it's cold outside, it's Chicago, acceptance. People, as they are, acceptance. My income, for most of us, fixed at this point, accepted. What do I change? My attitude. That's in my control. Jnana Yoga. Jnana Yoga teaches us to know ourselves. What did I say? I said, we have to understand that, um, and when it comes to time, we have to know how much we want. The world doesn't decide what our demands are. We decide what our demands are. The world doesn't demand, decide if we have expectations, doesn't demand if, uh, if, tell us if we should treat people like animals or vice versa, doesn't teach us about um, finding faults in other people. We decide in all of this. If I know myself, I can change all of this. If I don't know myself, I can't. Just like I said yesterday, if I move too fast, I can't stop and assess where I'm going. Karma yoga, bhakti yoga, jnana yoga, this is all the same as management. These are the same management principles. I think at the Kellogg School of Business, they teach Gita. The Gita way of business, or the Gita School of uh, um, Way of Management. It's the same stuff. But if you went there, you'd have to pay $50,000 a year. You repaid a hundred and you complain. <laughs> this is all very much spiritual matters because it's through relative liberation that we achieve absolute liberation. You have a ladder. You don't go from rung one to rung 10. You go from one to two to three and you move forwards. In our own lives, First I break the addiction of overeating, then I break the addiction of overthinking, then I break the addiction of overdoership, claiming I do this, I do this. These are all relative steps that take me to absolute liberation. And in that, in that absolute state, absolute peace. 
I become infinitely wealthy. Or zero, for some of you. Because you said zero was the starting point, the origin. Stress management is very important for all of us. Because when we're stressful, what is the first thing that goes from our lives? Peace, calmness, spirituality. I'm stressed, I need more sleep. I'm stressed, I need to do work in the morning. I'm stressed, I stop going to the gym. All of those necessary items in our life go away. And it's so ironic because when we're stressed, that's what we need the most. We need physical exercise. We need mental exercise. We need intellectual exercise. So we have to understand this. And stress management, really speaking, is mind management. If we can learn to manage stress, we can learn to manage the mind. If we can learn to manage the mind, we learn to manage mind. We learn to manage this ignorance. See, the particular aspect of an illusion is if you believe in the illusion, it's called delusion. But if you know the illusion, it becomes entertainment. For a child who's never seen um, the mirage on the road, on the tar road, thinks that, hey, father, mother, don't drive through that, the car will get wet. But for the person, for you and I who know about that mirage, it becomes entertainment. Like, cool, look, there's a mirage. Cool, there's a rainbow. That's my management, which comes from mind management, which comes from stress management or management in general. These principles are universal. Three months into the Vedanta course, I thought to myself, wow, I almost feel like everyone in the world should have to study Vedanta. If not for two and a quarter years, at least for three months, you become better at understanding people, understanding yourself, discipline when it comes to the body, Time management, everything, everything accrues to you. Because Vedanta is the science of life. If we understand the science of life, all other sciences become easy then. You're empowered to take up all other sciences. Swami so, Chinmayananda says, um, Vedanta helps the Hindu be a better Hindu, the Muslim be a better Muslim, the Christian be a better Christian. Same thing goes with what we're learning. So the stress management fits in perfectly with Vedanta. And I shared this comment in this saga, and I'll finish with this, is that um, Swami Advenanda had once told us, when he taught us, he's a resident of Acharya at CIF, that uh, the, Vedanta, the Vedanta never cries. The Vedanta never cries because he's stronger than the world. The world is not stronger than him. Stress management is when we let the circumstances control us, and we lose control of the circumstances. Prince Arjuna was in control of the circumstances, lost control of the circumstances, regained control of the circumstances. We should keep that in mind too. Everything we do. Are we in control of the circumstances, or are the circumstances in control of us? And think, we're learning to be done. We are Vedantins. If we cry, it's out of empathy, not out of um, apathy. Shanti, 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 Hari Om.